Chapter 5, A Miner's Week. Today, most people work 8 hours a day, 5 days a week, but a miner worked 12 to 16 hours a day, and after his prospecting was done, he still had to cook dinner. Many men had never cooked a meal before. Dinner might be only beans, bacon, and coffee. Fruit and vegetables were scarce. Without them, a prospector could get a disease called scurvy. It came from not getting enough vitamin C. Hardly anyone took a bath. Beards grew long. No one wanted to waste time washing clothes. They figured all that could wait till after they figured all that could wait till after they st- struck it rich. Miners sometimes banded together in small groups. That way they didn't get so lonely. They could share a tent. They could share expenses and work too. If one miner got sick or was injured, his partners could take care of him. Camp doctors weren't trustworthy. Sometimes they were only swindlers pretending to be doctors. They'd give a spoonful of flavored sugar water to a patient and say it was medicine. Then they'd charge up to a hundred dollars. Miners at work in the gold fields. Some wives did come west to help out their husbands, but there were hardly ever any kids in the camps. The few who were there didn't go to school. They might help out at the mines, or they got town jobs to earn money for, their, for the family. They delivered newspapers, swept shop floors, and ran errands in hotels. Wives garden, gardened, did laundry, and sometimes even mined. They also did the cooking. In September 1849, a prospector saw a woman named Luzana Wilson cooking outside her family's tent. He longed for home-cooked food, so he paid her $10 for a biscuit. That's the same as $250 today. At night, sometimes miners gathered together to drink alcohol or gamble. They'd play simple games like outdoor bowling. They'd sing songs like, Oh, Susanna. Sometimes bands of musicians or troops of actors came by the camps. This was a special treat. A little girl named Loda Crabtree toured mining camps with her mother. She sang and danced for the miners. Everywhere she went, audiences tossed gold coins at her feet. When she was older, she performed in San Francisco and New York. By the time she died, she was worth $4 million. Sometimes miners made trips to Stockton or Sacramento or even all the way to San Francisco. Miners had their gold nuggets and gold dust weighed at banks. They were paid by the weight of their gold. A pinch of gold dust was worth about a dollar. In town, men bought more supplies. They'd also drink, dance, and gamble, sometimes all night long. Only three out of every hun- only three out of every hundred people in California were women. Since there were hardly any women around, men danced with each other. They grew tired of only seeing other rough, dirty men all the time, though. Prospectors liked to get their photos taken in town. They'd pose with their mining tools and gold nuggets. If they didn't have any, the photographer might lend some gold for the picture. Miners would send these photos home to show off a little or to comfort their families who missed them. Sunday was a day off. Everyone did chores, wrote letters home, or hunted animals for food. Some held prayer meetings or they rested up for another long, hard week ahead. Most miners were tired, worried, lonely, homesick, dirty, smelly, and broke. What kept them going? The thought that any day now they'd find gold. Other people had. All they needed was a little luck.